Welcome to Dream World Observatory. Welcome to Backyard Astronomy. Today is going to be an interesting day. I'm going to uh, do something that's been requested for a while. In fact, I actually mentioned it one time about sort of a, well, sort of a walkthrough of the observatory. You can't do a whole lot of a walkthrough on a little bitty two-room observatory, but I will show you a little bit of the outside and a little bit about the construction a little bit later. Uh, so come join us while we take a look at the birth of Dream World Observatory. Okay, we're on the inside now. Uh, I've got the exit open, the fire exit I call it. And you're now in the main observatory. I'm kind of looking around. As you can see, um, I got the walls painted blue. I like blue. Telescope blue. Telescope. Accents, balls, balls, accent, telescope. What can I say? So let's have a look around and see what's in here. What we're looking at there is uh, right after you come into the entrance, uh, there is a uh, couple things on the wall here. I've got a picture here that was given to me at Christmas one time of all the space uh, shuttles and uh, all kinds of spaceships and all that we've had in, in the past and, and around the world. Some people have. Right above it, you'll see a interesting little thing here. That is my very first telescope that I've got when I was about, I think I was either 10 or 12, somewhere around there. Um, my mother got me that for Christmas from Sears Roebuck. I couldn't see nothing with that, and that's about all I can say about it, except uh, it was had disappeared from all the years when I was a kid, and about 30-something years later, my grandmother, before she passed, told me I need to come and get some stuff out of her shed, and I went there. Uh, I live in Florida, and they live in North Carolina. We went there, and sure enough, that was my telescope in there, but that was all that was left of it. Tripod was gone, eyepieces and everything. So, all I, But I do have the original, so it's got a home here inside the observatory. It's my very first one. Years later, uh, I got me another telescope. But I had two or three of them since that first one, but uh, they weren't very successful. I had a small one that was about a three-inch mirror in it, a little white one, and uh, that is actually the very first telescope that I actually ever saw Jupiter or Saturn in. I had a fit. Uh, and that's, I did not realize that you could see something like that with one of these little telescopes. But they, I do not have it. Uh, it got to what uh, a little fella tore that up, so uh, it's gone. So uh, along about, I'm not going to be sure on this, I think it was either 83 or 86, I can't remember for sure when. This telescope right here is a, it's a Tasco, it's a 5 inch, it's an F8, and it's on an equatorial mount, as you can see. Uh, my wife got me that for Christmas, and uh, that had, was a fine telescope, still is. And I'm really looking at something right now about taking this telescope and mounting it to uh, my big one. This telescope we call Gemini. Now, this big boy here is, uh, we call this one Leo. This is my big pride and joy right here. This is a, a Mead uh, LX200 uh, 10 inch. And it's, a, it's one of the classics. There's a little few things I will tell you about this telescope in the future. Uh, a lot of stuff that you see on this telescope does not come with it, at least back when I got it. Uh, the new ones do have a lot of it on there. But this is one of the original classic, classics that you always hear about that uh, really grabbed the whole astrophotography. Okay, and over here, you'll see I've got a big pair of binoculars in here, and, and a couple of, as a, a Hoffman mask from the other wall was a, a Batonoff mask. It, let's look at this roof right here. Uh, you see the wheels? You don't need to have wheels on a roof to open this up. There's, I think there's five wheels on each side, and uh, of course, you see the rafters in the top. This is a shingle uh, roof, and those vents that we talked about. Just looking around the observatory, there are a couple things. You're actually going to need a table. This is the built-in one I put in here, and uh, 
I have a couple of cases on here that has my uh, my camera in it and a few eyepieces and things like that. So you'll you'll likely have something like that. Back here on the wall, that is a clipboard that I usually keep notes and all on about what I got going on. That particular thing that's on there right now, if I don't miss it, I believe it is my uh, instructions for what to do as you're at the telescope uh, every night when you go out. You need to have that there uh, or somewhere where you can actually get it. If you remember, my telescope is just sitting right here, so that's a good thing to look for. Okay, it's, uh, let's take a look at the warm room. Okay, we're in the warm room now. Um, as you can see, right, you see the computer on the desk. There's a desk in here too, and it kind of like a uh, wrap around in the corner. Uh, right there, you'll see the wonders that uh, at night when you're when you're filming and it's cold or taking images and it's cold, you can actually have the door closed here, and uh, you can see the, uh, watch the telescope in there. Now, if you're in, if you got it going and you want to see it you have to turn on the red lights. If you'll notice right up here on the wall, there are red and white lights that will actually be on whether or not you're, you're imaging. Uh, overall, on the back, on the side wall there, I, I've got a, a little monitor there that I'll use whenever I'm in the, in the observatory itself doing some alignment. I can actually put it up on the uh, wall there and see what I'm doing without having to go back and forth. Also, if I have company, and they want to see what's going on, that shows the image real good. And that's, of course, my little throne. All right, looking around, there's, a, there's my recliner. And this not only serves as a, a warm room, but it's also a man cave. Don't you know? And uh, you're going to need a little library back there in the back. If you'll notice, I've got quite a bit of stuff on the back wall back there. Let me see if I can, there you go. Uh, that's my library. Now, those white things you see up there or goes all the way across the room. They are about, I can't remember how many years worth, but there are quite a few years of astronomy, magazine, and sky and telescope. I quit buying them after a while after I thought I knew everything, so I, I, I let that go. Anyway, that pretty much takes care of it over on this wall, as you can see. If you remember right, I have my space pins and uh, all in, on them display in, in, in glass case. And up on the wall is a display of each one of them. It's a print of, of all what I've got. I do have the complete set of the space shuttle. All the space shuttle, uh, Mercury, Apollo, um, all of them. I got, I got everything that was ever flown all the way to the last shuttle. I don't have anything since. Uh, we haven't really done anything since, if you want to know the truth about it. But that'll about pretty much take care of it. Uh, actually, the observatory is not as big as it looks on, on film. It looks bigger than what it really is. You have to remember, you're only building something, and the observatory itself is only about 8 by 10, and, and the warm room here is probably, I would say it's probably only about 7 by 8 at the most. Or it might even be 7 by 10 might be seven by ten so it's not much to it uh, as far as that but it's enough for one man to work uh keeps me pretty busy whenever i'm out here so let's uh wrap this here up and see what we talk a little bit about uh what you got to do to build one okay i thought i'd share with a bunch of construction uh pictures uh there were a lot taken but i'm going to show a few that would kind of help you get started on what you need to do um, it's not very complicated to do uh, you know, look at the, uh, the pedestal that's in the ground I think that's either 10 foot or 12 foot long and half of it is in the ground with a two foot square concrete block on the end of it that I had to pour that'll keep it from coming out of the ground uh, so that's the first thing you had to do next thing we had to uh, put up these uh, builder floor framing and put up the uh, uh, studs for the walls as you can see I got the studs all in and actually painted the, uh, the pedestal 
and then long comes next we put the siding on so that gives us a, a good a bit of a, a house to deal with then you kind of see what we got going now is a uh, is the roof got the undercarriage in next thing was to assemble the roof itself and um, get ready and mount it as you can see we got her up there just me myself and i so what you see coming up now is the actual original observatory without any warm room the original warm room uh, that was on here uh, was replaced uh, in about five years ago when we did the rebuild on the roof and the internal of the observatory what you're looking at now is the uh, actual layout of the new warm room with all the floor, the studs, and uh, we're fixing to put the roof on here. Uh, this is going to be a tin roof with uh, plywood and tin. And now we enclose the walls in and getting ready to uh, do some interior work. Uh, now the interior was going together pretty good. Uh, you can see how the wall was put on, on the rear of the observatory and the new window was put in. The original one was only one window. I, I moved it to two. And then we put in our little library. That was the original library on the first, uh, well, on the second uh, warm room. That was the original way it looked. It now looks different. Of course, over a period of time, you're going to accumulate a lot of junk. Okay, that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, it just uh, sometimes uh, I think that the best thing in the world you could probably do is build yourself an observatory if you're really serious about deep sky and you start collecting some equipment. Because if you remember right, when you go to set up every night, you've got all, if you're doing astrophotography, you got all this setup you got to do. You got all the alignments you got to do. You got all this. Well, with an observatory setup, it can be become a permanent mount. You don't have to do all that other stuff. Uh, it's good to do a still a preventive maintenance. Say once every six months or so, you go and you run uh, uh, a drip line. That pretty much puts it back on pole alignment. If it's on that mount out there, it's not going nowhere, and it's not likely to get off very much so but you might want to do a, a one every six months just to be sure you know how to do it uh, any other kind of alignment would be like uh, your PhD too, push your dummy too uh, for your guiding you might want to check it every so often uh, 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 basically um, I think we've done, done cover that pretty well in another video of what you need to do with push your dummy but uh, when it comes to your initial alignment the only thing you really got to do is but a, but a uh, telescope sitting on a mount like that, a permanent mount, is uh, sync it with a star. And once you get it sync, uh, get it uh, everything synced up. All you have to do is put a batten off mass on and go and get focusing. Now, some of the people have got some other kind of focusing method. But that's basically it. That's all you got to do. Uh, then you start shooting after you get everything set up. Now, it's not always gravy, but that's the basic idea. Is is uh, behind the observatory is not have to do all that work it takes away from your setup time i mean from your shooting time you, you don't want to do all that uh, if you can help it uh i i have to hand it to these guys who have these portable mounts that are shooting these fine pictures uh, they really are dedicated is all i can say especially the ones that are shooting uh in mono camera okay so i think we're going to kind of let that go with that uh that's about all I got to say about having an observatory, other than the fact that I love it. Uh, I wouldn't trade it for nothing when it comes to observe, uh, doing anything with uh, astronomy. I, I'd love it being out here. So, uh, if you like what you saw, click like below. Leave me some comments. Tell me what you think. Now, I might be able to answer some questions about the observatory, about, uh, about constructing one, whatever you want. Um, there are some things you have to take care of uh, uh, when you're doing that too. So anyway, until uh, if you haven't never signed up before, hit subscribe down there and ring that little bell. And that way you'll get a notification next time we shoot the video. In the meantime, you guys that are already on here, go back and look at some of these videos and uh, keep yourself up to date. 
Sometimes with all this weather business you have, you kind of forget what you're doing or what you've already done and you have to do it all over again. So I'm trying to put a lot into these that way it'd be easier to, to get back on track. So, okay, so until next time, this is Stan Bohm in DreamWorld Observatory, Backyard Astronomy. Keep looking up and clear skies.